What's happening, Shutter Nation? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode number 15 of Shred Your Body. I cannot believe we are already on episode number 15. It seems like just yesterday we started this empowerment movement that we now call the ER Shred, which has literally impacted the lives of thousands of people around the world. And I, I, I get goosebumps. My heart is filled. My soul is filled. It's my passion, my life's mission to help other people come up as amazing as I feel every single day. Every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we come on live and we do a call like this called Shred Your Body. And my focus with this call is to highlight amazing individuals, amazing shredders, people who raised their hand, who said yes to themselves, and over time have not just crushed it physically, but are crushing it mentally, have drastically transformed their life. And my hope is, is that by sharing their stories, by highlighting these epic, amazing people, it will give you inspiration to know that you are worthy, that you are so freaking worth it. Your health is your greatest wealth. As you come in, please say hello. Um, tonight, I have a very special guest, a person who has turned in to be a very good, close, personal friend of mine. Um, right now, it's virtual because of the stupid thing that's going on in the world, but I we cannot wait. Yes. I cannot wait, Heather, until the day comes that we can all get together and I can give so many amazing giant bear hugs to all of you people that have just stepped up and, and have, have helped create this community. So welcome to Shred Your Body. I think this is actually the third time that you've been on this call. You're like a three-time a three. repeat, but tonight's going to be a little bit different. Tonight's going to be a little bit different, and I'm excited about it. So first off, thank you. Welcome, because I know you're a very, very busy person, but I hope you know that I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, I love it. I If you want something done, give it to a busy person. But like, I have absolutely loved what has come since I joined this community and, and seen the shift in things, because it has shifted me, and I am so excited to be here. And I'm crazy, I right? To share share my time tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, you've been a part of the sh of the ER Shred community pretty much from the get go. Like as far back as I can remember, you were there, and I remember crystal clear, like it was like yesterday, looking at you and watching you today. And man, I'll tell you, like I I get I seriously like this lights my fire. Like I get goosebumps. You know, I send you messages. I am so happy for you. I am excited for you. Like you're, you are a walking, talking billboard for ER Shred. And, and besides that though, Heather, like it's just, I know what it's done. You've shared that. And I hope to, to bring some of that out tonight and we'll dive into that, but let's just start off real quick. Let's just get to the juicy details. Hey, hey, the juicy like the Canadian, like Here the Canadians go. say, Hey, right. I was listening to some Canadian messages and they're like, hey, hey, and now I got it stuck in my head. So if that comes, if that pops up to all my Canadian friends, um, this is your fault, by the way, that I now say, hey, at the end of, you know, my, some of my sentences. But that's because we're worldwide. We're breaking through borders. That's right, baby. That's, why that's right. Okay. Damn Skippy. Damn Skippy. Look, I'm even standing for you tonight, just in case you didn't recognize I that. Did, um, very special. But listen, here's the deal. So let's get to the juicy details and let's just get it out. OK, you started your very first shred when? October 26th. October 26th. 26th. It is now February 23rd. And for the grand total, that's my drum roll in case anybody doesn't know. Um, you have lost how much weight? Since I joined the shred, it was 22 and a half pounds and 28 inches. 22 and a half pounds and 28 inches off your body. You just posted a pretty crazy picture holding up a size two pair of pants. Um, and I'm wearing them. 
you're wearing them. Now, I don't know exactly. I don't, you know, I know, I know with women, it's a little bit different than men, but try to sum up. I know that's not everything and we're going to dive into that, but sum up for me, what does that feel like from your perspective? What is it? I mean, what is it weird? What does it feel like to put on a size two? So here's the thing. Since I got puffy, I stopped wearing real pants. So I lived in leggings and stretchable denim that I didn't really know what my true size was. Mm. But I know based on what sizes I was wearing, I was a six pushing an eight, which means I am down three pant sizes. Hell yes. Um, so that in itself is crazy. Yeah. What's crazy about it, Heather? What does that what does that mean? What does that mean that it's crazy? Like describe that to me. I don't think I've been this size since freshman year of college. Wow. Right. Wow. I mean, I must have gotten here at one point, but it didn't last long because I pulled these pants out of storage. Mm. What made you hold on to those pants? They were gold pants. And I'm in them. <laughs> I love it. That's the best answer ever. There's like that's there's the best a, like, answer ever. Pair of them at this size. I was like, you know what? Eventually, I'll get there. Yeah, un freaking right believable. Right Unbelievable. Now, besides that, besides the physical, besides the weight, besides the inches, give me a few other things that have. What's the biggest? Because I know you're very big on keeping track and journaling and, and following along and, and you're really kind of reflecting and you've gotten better at this as time goes on. Like I've watched you, um, let everybody know besides the weight, what else comes with that? What is different in Heather's life now than what Heather's life was back in October? So when the sickness happened, I went remote teaching. I'm a middle school music teacher. Mm -hmm. Everything shifted for me that I stopped being able to teach what I teach. Okay. And so I got into a rut physically, emotionally, mentally. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't challenging myself. It was write a choice board and these kids can pick from these nine activities. Okay. There's your lesson for the week. And I usually mm -hmm. teach four different programs a week. So I'm lesson and they're every other day classes. So I'm lesson planning all the time. My mm -hmm. brain stopped having to do that. So when it came time to start having to do that again, it's the shift in my ability to focus on what needs to happen has been incredible. Wow. And minus the snowstorms, because I live in Connecticut and I have a husband who plows, my sleep for the most part is better. I had okay. moments or, you know, when your six-year-old decides that I had a bad dream about something happening, so come stay with me and he sleeps horizontally in his bed so mm -hmm. those aren't the greatest sleep but in general it's been yeah. better and i think the most recent thing that i've noticed is my creativity is coming back so you saw you saw the end result when i collaborated with mimi she wrote that amazing song and i'm like i need to make a music video out of this and we embraced it and i was like just the the fire started going again and we have more yeah. stuff in the works so brace yeah. yourself for what might be coming because mm. she and i together are a, we're gonna be a force that's funny you you guys are um did, I, did you tell me that i apparently inspired another song from her possibly yeah she was possibly about okay this. okay so there's a lot of um, that inspire us Okay. Well, listen, you know, I'm, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. Um, I can vouch. I can vouch to your creativity because you have been such a force in the community. I mean, the organization that you have brought, the ease of use for every new person that comes in. I mean, if you're on this call and you've benefited from something that Heather's done, um, go ahead and let her know and share and love on her because I'm telling you, this girl without her and, and there's a lot of other handfuls of people that that are play a big part too but everybody has their specialty and the beautiful thing about our community is that we've learned that we don't need to step on each other 
we've learned that when we bring our creative forces and we bring our specialties together and we zone in on what we're good at and we work together in synchronicity and in, in, in like a well-oiled machine, my God, watch out because the gates have opened and that's really where we're at today, right? And what I've done in the community for some of the things that people have seen, like the units and the Google Docs and things of that nature that I share. Yeah. That is what I do when I teach. So I have found the ER Shred has given me the outlet to be able to use those because that's what I get passionate about is teaching and simplifying it so it's easy to use. Yeah. You are, you, you know, there is, there is. I can see that, Heather. You you got to be like, sir, I'm flashing all the comments across the screen. I I'm hope you can see them. If not, go back and watch them because everybody's loving on you. Um, but I can see that. You you got to be one hell of a damn good teacher because um, you're really, really good at it. And I, I kind of wish like I wish I had it. I wish my daughter has teachers like you. I can only hope that she does um, people that care as much as you do. Um, and I know there's a lot of them that are out there, but I, I, I don't know all them and I know you. So I'm going to gush on you. How's that? Thank you. OK, great. Um, so. All right. Now, I'm accepting it. That's progress. That's okay. something I have gained. Now here's here's you know me and you know these calls. Um, I want to find out how we got to here. I want to find out how we got to this point. This is this is what I I like to kind of dive into. And I know that you've done a ton of work over the last few months on this stuff. But for people that don't know you, um, let's learn about Heather a little bit. Where where are you originally from? Where'd you grow up? What was life uh, what was life like as a kid? And Jesse, I, because I've seen enough of these calls and I know where you're going, I've actually been reflecting on a lot of this okay. um, to, to, to see where those points in my journey have been to be able to share those tonight. So I was actually a, I grew up in Windsor, Connecticut, just outside okay. of the capital. I'm a Connecticut native. Um, I was one of the skinny kids growing up. I could eat like no tomorrow, mm. but I wouldn't gain an ounce. Okay. I was one of those lucky ones. I'll never forget. I was six years old and I went out. My aunt had taken us for a sleepover so my parents could do, go do something else. Mm -hmm. And we went out to dinner with our husband and I remember ordering fish and chips and I wanted the adult portion. And her husband was like, there's going to be leftovers. I'm going to be stuck eating her meal. Didn't want me to order it. My aunt's like, no, let her order it. We ordered the adult portion. He had to ask me for a bite. That's kind of how I was as a kid. That's crazy. So I had the metabolism and growing you're up. You're like, I, just so you know, you're, you're the kid as the fat kid growing up. You're the kid that I, that I hated. Just so you know. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and I get that. And I, I felt that reflecting that because when I was a kid, Heather, they all called me heifer. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm not a cow because I'm only, I was wearing size slim clothes, but that's what they decided to do because kids are cruel and I see it every day and I squash it when I can. Yeah. And I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning from that growing up, but I was active. I danced for 15 so, years. But hold on, hold on. Before we get into that, sorry, I'm yeah. going to stop you. That's fine. I know a lot of, I know a lot of skinny kids that grew up that being skinny, being super skinny was almost kind of like being fat too. Did you ever have the opposite side of the spectrum where I was always called the fat kid where you made fun of for being skinny, mini, twiggy, any of those types of things that, that you can there hear? Was, there was a little bit of that. I think they, their, their biggest thing was calling me heifer just to get me going. Okay. Because it was, they're just, that's just what I felt. I didn't feel much of the other stuff, <sighs> but I was so involved in the music life. And a lot of musicians are different. So I didn't mm. feel that as much from them because I did violin, viola, um, violin, voice and piano lessons growing up. I danced for 15 years. So that was my activity. I would do town softball league growing up. So we were busy, not necessarily active, but busy. Okay. So, so, so growing up as a kid, nothing really too crazy, right? No. Nothing. I mean, normal, normal, what we would say, normal childhood life, 
Yeah. Everything was cool. No crazy like situations, scenarios, like no trauma. Nothing. That, nothing no, crazy of that nature. Okay. My biggest shift was when I was 16. Okay. Let's talk uh, about that. So, and again, this is where I'm, I'm seeing things where I thought I knew more than I really do. I was 16 and I woke up and I couldn't sit up and I'm like, what in the hell is happening? Hmm. I was in such back pain. I couldn't figure it out. And we spent years figuring it out. It was so playing the violin, you hold the instrument on your left and you bow with your right. Well, there's a counterweight to that. And mm. the counterweight of that was pulling on the right side of my back that it all got screwed up. That I couldn't play for more than an hour without pain. So we were trying, they're like, what is happening here? This is a mess. At one point I was getting Botox injections to paralyze the muscles in my back so they would stop spazzing. I was in physical therapy twice a week. I'm like, here I am wanting to be a music major. Yeah. And the instrument that I play and I love is causing me pain. Hmm. Okay. And this is 16. 16. Okay. So now, and how long does this go on for? I dealt with it all through college. I still all through college. Okay. So do college. you feel, so at 16, did this start? So you just said something, you're like, here I am wanting to play this instrument. And yet the thing that I wanted to play caused me severe pain. So now we have this thing that we love that, that causes us pain, right? This mm -hmm. is sometimes what happens with even other types of trauma. And I want people to understand that trauma is trauma, right? You know, let's take, you know, for instance, unfortunately, you know, um, uh, you know, sexual stuff, right? The sexual molestation, you have somebody that you love, right? Causing abuse and it creates those mixed messages inside the brain. And we don't necessarily realize it. It just starts to, it just goes away. And then it, it starts to sink in and it starts to sink in. But now this is going with you through college and what did this necessarily, I mean, what did it do? How did it affect life? What, what, what had to change? Well, I'm stubborn. I don't know if you figured that out yet. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little thick headed sometimes. Um, so I pushed through and we continue to seek out treatment. We continue to seek out trying to find answers. At one point I went to the children's hospital with my instrument. And they hooked up monitors to my back to see what was going on. And they could see everything triggering. They couldn't identify why it was happening, but they could see it and they could tell me what it was. Mm. So I just accepted it. I got myself a TENS unit to have for rehearsals. And I talked to conductors because, you know, Saturday morning was three hours of rehearsals. Sunday night was three hours of rehearsals. And I'm like, there's going to be times I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah. And, and they were, there were times it got frustrating. There were times it got in the way. So, so that started at 16 and then 2001. So I was 17. I got run over by a drunk on a golf cart at the racetrack. They broke a bone off my femur, but I waited three weeks to get it checked out. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you say you got run over by a drunk on a golf cart? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but like, I did not expect <laughs> no, that you story. Had to because <laughs> You can't make that up. That's for sure. Like that. <laughs> she clipped me and kept going. It was Wait, you got a hit and run? It was a hit and run. <laughs> it was a hit and run. I walked in it for three weeks because I was going from my friend's camper to my camper. And I was like, I didn't want my dad to know I got hurt because I didn't want him to feel bad about it. So I just walked on it. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I stepped in a hole. It's sore. I'm okay. When it was still swollen. I finally went and got it checked out. They're like, yeah, there's a chip of your femur floating around in your knee. Yeah, I've had okay. five surgeries since that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just five. <laughs> so you fix this, right? Well, I thought now, I fixed this is your your when it, how old this is when now? 17. Okay, so 16, you have this thing on your back. 17, you get clipped in, in with this. And then you start to deal with this other stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so dealing with the left knee and the right side of my back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so then we get in, let's, so now we're into college. Now we're into college, right? 
you survive, you survive the hit and run golf cart. You are figuring out how to manage all of this stuff. And we get into college and how's life in college. We, talk to me about this. Are you sure you're ready for this? I'm ready. April fool's day. Freshman year. I end up in the emergency room. I call my mom. Had to convince her I was in the emergency room. She did believe me pretty quickly because they had caller ID. Yeah. I had blacked out. And they and it was not alcohol induced. <laughs> um, let me just clarify that right now. I it was had, not a freshman mistake. It Got was it. not a freshman mistake. I had an ovarian cyst rupture. Mm. And it was poisoning me, is what they think mm. happened. So I got rushed to the emergency room. That was freshman year. October of sophomore year, I'm puking for a month straight. I'm like, what is happening? I was journaling what I was eating to try and track things. Mm -hmm. And when you're in college, the first place you call is health services, right? The campus. Mm -hmm. You're pregnant. Phone call appointment. You're pregnant. That's what That was their diagnosis over the phone. I was like, yeah, no. No, that's not what's going on here. I right. need somebody to tell me something. So at that point, I was thinking that I understood my body. I was listening to it. I'm like, this is that same kind of pain that hit me real quick in April and knocked me out. Uh -huh. So, and, oh, and by the way, that day I didn't want to go to the hospital. My RA had to kind of block me in her room until the paramedics yeah. got there to take me because I was like, I'm just going to bed. I'm fine. Yeah. And, uh, I was a little, again. I'm thick headed sometimes. You're one of these people. I'm one of these people. Gotcha. So I finally get to a doctor and they had done ultrasounds and they couldn't see anything. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, there is something wrong with me. And so finally they're like, well, we can cut you open and do exploratory surgery. I'm like, do it, do it. Yeah. Because there's something going on and I'm, I'm not lying to you. They had found another ovarian cyst but it had flipped my ovary and it was wrapped around so they couldn't see it from any ultrasound. Ah. So I'm like, I know my body. Right. I thought I knew my body. So I'm like, I know my body, there's something going on. So I made it through college, got my degree, but I was doing physical therapy and I was dealing with, I, um, my husband and my first Christmas together, 2005, I had another blackout episode, another ruptured cyst. Yeah. So, That's crazy. And then 2013, here's the craziest one. I'm arguing with my doctor. I'm like, get me in for an ultrasound because I know I have another cyst. I know I do. Just handle it. They yeah. were using me. 32 days. Sick during concert season. As a music teacher, that's not where you want to be. I get back to school from our winter break. And one of the parent chaperones that had gone on the D.C. trip was a midwife. One of the teachers I work with said, call her right now. Here's her number. Yeah. Let's see what she can do. She got me into her office that Tuesday, that Friday, January, 2013. I had another surgery. The cyst had grown so big, it ripped my ovary off the tube and they had to take the ovary. That's crazy. But yet I still had a child naturally. Yeah. That's a miracle. Oh, yeah. He was a blessing for sure. Yeah. Because we, we didn't know. Right. So so they do this. They do this last surgery. And how's how I mean, how's your health at this point? Like, how's everything going with that? I mean, I was puffy. I was I fluctuated. Probably 160, 175 ish in there. And I've always been concerned because there is there are chronic issues that happen um like high blood pressure is in there high cholesterol is in there so i've always been conscious of it yeah do i always do the right thing no but am i aware yes yeah i've been aware okay so so now so you get through all this stuff do you feel i mean has obviously this I is a you, your, you ready for you, the, obviously, this has affected your life, right? 
it's, you know, all, I mean, you can see where things start to compound, right? So, you know, thank you for sharing all that. It's a lot of obviously personal information, but I hope people can understand because what I, what I always try to do, Heather, is I, I try to let people know that we're here at this point for a reason. Right. And it's not always necessarily your fault because we haven't been taught, we haven't done the work to try to go back and trace where the roots of the problems kind of stem from. And, you know, I want to, I want people to kind of be able to take your story, whether this really affected your weight or whatever the case may be, we'll get to kind of where you maybe lost it a little bit and, and where that went into. But I want people to realize that if they just, if they do a little work, if they do some deep diving and they, they take it step by step, like we do here and we show the track record yeah. of where it comes from, you know, first it's the back. Okay. You're 16 years old. You might not think it's a big deal, but I'm telling you, it's stuck in your head. Then 17 years old then freshman year in college, then sophomore year in college, then you still continue with this thing. You're arguing with doctors. You think, you know, you think something's wrong with you. This is our thing, right? We have something's wrong with me and something was wrong with you. Right. And thank God. I don't know if you saw Susan, who's yeah. a holistic nurse, you know, functional medicine practitioner. She's like, thank God you always argue with them. You know, doctors have this this thing where they think that they they have this di I call it the diagnosis problem, where they always have to diagnose something, even if you know what I mean. It's like, oh, you know, I don't. Let's. It's this. Like you have this, right? And so you have all this trauma that's built up. And I don't. Have you? Did you deal with it? I mean, was there ways to to let it out and express it, or were you just being your stubborn ass self and going, oh, I, I can do it? Because I'm 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 like that. We're actually alike on that, and it really yeah. ruined me for a long time. If I'm being totally honest. Honestly, I, I don't know that I dealt with it. I feel like I just accepted it. Mm. But the difference is that I'm noticing is my parents' generation don't really talk about issues. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks like they have their private conversations, but it's never an open conversation. And okay. I think that's why I'm willing to share this right now, because I think that hearing these stories and hearing what people go through might trigger you to dig a little bit deeper and don't sure like bodily functions are a normal part of life and i don't know what made it so taboo that we don't talk about it and share about it because you know what people might be able to find answers a little faster if people were willing to talk yeah yeah for sure for sure okay so we get through all of that and then you come into where where are we at in life now where what stage of life are we at so i mean you, you the last thing we, the last thing we knew, you had a huge thing that flipped your ovary, and you had this surgery. Yep. How old is how old is that? So that was 2013. So 2013. 29. Okay. And then you now you're married at this point in time. I got married that summer. Okay, so you got married that summer. Um, and you guys obviously you talked about you want to have family. He just happened. No. Just happened. Okay. You just kind of went with the flow. Okay. Um, so you have the surgery. I mean, did that bring up any thoughts? I mean, did you, were you, were you ever thinking how you wanted to be a mom at all? Were you ever, I mean, was that, that was, part of the thought was, process? Like, and I mean, it was always in my head, but it was like, it was kind of a, it is what it is. And if it happens, it's meant to be. And if it doesn't, it's not. Okay. Like, I'm just, I'm not going to focus on it because if I do, then it's not going to go the way I want it to. Yeah. Do you feel that having that is a is a positive and a curse at the same time? Mm -hmm. mm. We're the same person in that aspect, you know. Um, I can get so blinded in going. People are like, I don't understand how do you it's what I do when I run ultras and stuff. Like it just it, I, I don't I can't describe it. But I think you get it. Like, like I, I think I think what you're describing is seriously my problem. Like, I I get so in it that I just brush off stuff, and I never actually, I I, I sweep it under the rug. And one of my favorite Peloton instructors, Emma, says you can't sweep it under the rug because all you get is a damn ass lumpy rug. And boy, is she right. Like, all I got from that was a lumpy ass rug. Do you feel that that that's kind of what you got too? Like we we had this this rug that just kind of went like this, and there's all these issues under there that are just bubbling, right? 
Yeah. That we never actually did it because the only way that we know how to deal with something is to block it out and go. Well, I think for me, part of the reason I just brush it off is because I, if I spend time on it, I give it too much value and energy. And that's kind of why I feel like I brush it to the side. I think that's my mechanism is if I don't deal with it, it's not there and it's not going to bother me. Yeah. Even though, cause, cause what am I going to open if I dig into it? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That's like a whole nother call that we can dive into. Um, okay. So, so here we are, you guys are married. Um, and what, um, what, Take, take us through 2013 to, I don't know, 2019. So got pregnant December. Okay. Hated being pregnant. So morning sickness for the first six months. Did the whole I'm eating for two, so I gained 90 pounds. It wasn't a healthy pregnancy. Um, took my four-month maternity leave. Okay, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Sorry. I can't let this one go. That's okay. Fine. You just explained to me that you had control for your life and you were always aware, but you got pregnant and all of a sudden you took on this mindset of, I need to eat for two. I'm not necessarily going to be aware and be healthy anymore. Where did that mindset shift come from? Like, where did you go from being aware and wanting to not be crazy about, you know, health, but I mean, you, you had an awareness, right? We're putting that out there. We're, puking we're, for six months. That's what happened. I puked okay. for six months and couldn't keep food down. So at that okay. point, anything tasted good. Anything that mm. would stay in my system tasted good. Okay. And that happened to be not good food. It was whatever I could find. What I like to call food-like substances. Correct. Okay. Correct. So you put on 90 pounds in your pregnancy. Yeah. That's a lot of babies. Yeah. That's like nine babies. It was a lot. Yeah. He was 810. It was a lot. And no, no, wait, it wasn't 90. It was six. Sorry. It was 60. I got to back that up. That was 60. I went over 190. That that's. The oh, number. you went over 190. Okay. And yeah, does that, I mean, did that affect you at all? Oh yeah. I was not happy with myself. I was not proud of it, but it was what it was. What does that mean you weren't happy with yourself? The, the fact that I knew that I was growing a life and I wasn't doing it the healthiest way I could. Did you feel guilty? I did. Because I ate shit. Yeah. Did you, I mean, so you felt guilty. I mean, what, did it start to affect, like, what, what does that do to you? <laughs> Like, how does that affect daily life? You're feeling, you know, that, you know, that you, what you're eating is what you're giving your baby. Right. Mm -hmm. But yet we're choosing and I get it. You're sick for six months or whatever, but you you just want to eat food, but then you're feeling guilty about the food that you're eating because you know, it probably isn't the best thing that you're doing. And you start to see like where, like, this is like, whoa, whoa, ch -ch -ch. you start pulling in all these different directions. Right. It's the cycle of life of parenting, isn't it? <laughs> sure is <laughs> um okay so you gain 90 pounds you have your son so it was 60 i was 190 i'm sorry you gain yeah, 60 no, pounds you have your son mm -hmm. and what happens after you have your son so here's the fun part my husband was working in upstate new york uh-huh so he would leave sunday morning and come home friday night for 18 months. Okay. So it was me and baby at home yeah. weeknights. I was, oh, and did I mention I also went back to finish my master's at the time too? Okay. I'm, so I'm not, I mean, normal. just not a lot of stress, just a little. Okay. So I did, you know, I was just surviving and running on fumes until May of 2015. Okay. May of 2015, a friend posted about nutritional shakes. I was like, you know what? Hubs isn't home. I don't have to worry about feeding him. DJ's seven months old. He's just starting food. It's time yeah. to make a shift. Okay. And so I started, I started using the products back in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And this is all, this is all the products you talk about are macronutrient meal replacement shakes, 
um, you know, cleanse for life, intermittent yep. fasting, bars, right. everything that, you know, uh, the company pledges, um, you know, highest level of certification. So it's healthy food. I mean, everything, right. no soy, no gluten, no artificial dyes, right. sweeteners, colors. I mean, we're talking like legit, like fuel your body for performance. You decide enough is enough. Like, this is it. Like, I need to feel me again. Is that yeah. kind of what it came down to you that, that yeah, everybody was, gets to that point? I'm going to le lead by example. He's starting to watch what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I need to make a change and lead by example. Okay. So you start this nutritional system and, and what happens? What's the results? I lost 40 pounds. Okay. That's awesome. So I lost all the baby weight and a little bit more. Yeah. Um, kept it off for a while. But, you know, maybe a year later. I just fell off the wagon like a lot of people do. Yeah. I started, you know, letting letting life affect me, like just the stress of teaching and running a department and concert season. And the, like I've seen posts about it lately is food for socialization. A lot okay. of that was happening. And mm -hmm. when I'm talking food, I'm talking liquid. We go out for drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it came back. Yeah. And then I got. So I, all of it came back. Probably 25 to 30 of it came back. Okay. So you lost 40, 25 to 30 comes back. Right. I mean, does that feel like, does that feel like, like a sucker punch? I mean, what, is, what does that feel like? It feels like crap. I mean, it's just like, I did all the work and I let myself down. Yeah. And do you feel like, so you feel it. Like, so you feel like you failed. Yeah, and I'm most critical of myself. So So you so you pretended again. Mm -hmm. I know what you did. You pretended again, you put on a happy smile face every day and pretended that nothing was wrong. Yep. Because you're a stubborn ass. And you and once dressed, again once again swept another lump under the rug. And I dressed for it, like the way I dressed my body, people didn't realize how much I had gained. Mm-hmm. Like people are like, wait, you had how much you weighed? How people who see me now were like, wait a minute, you really weighed that much before? I was like, yeah, I just knew how to hide it. Yeah, I was good. Yeah. So you see, though, you see what you're doing there to your own brain, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're lying to yourself. Yep. I spent years of my life doing that. It's miserable. Yep. Yep. It's miserable. And I, it, it's the most horrible thing ever that I that I look back on. Right. It's just it's hard, but I get it. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I'm and there's so many millions of people that do the same damn thing. And if they if they have the courage to admit it and fight through it, it, it can be it can be freeing. But right. man, is it scary shit. Mm -hmm. Right? It's yep. scary, scary shit. So all right, so so now we're back. We put on this weight and 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 now what? So I you know, I jump back in a little bit. I lose lose some of it again, not all of it, but some of it again, because groups of friends wanted to do weight loss challenges to try and motivate each other. But when your community is only like ten people, it fizzles out pretty quickly. Yeah, so it'll get a good run for a couple of months. We get some goals, we set some goals, and challenge each other, and then it disappears. Okay. Pick up and we try it again. So I was beginning of last year. I was probably 155, 160. Beginning of last year. January 2020. Okay. You did the typical, you did the typical thing that most people do. You go on these challenges. Oh, we get revved up. We're gonna go on this challenge and we do it primarily for weight loss, right? This is what all these these I, that's what all yeah. these stupid challenges are about, right? It's about weight There's, loss, weight like loss, weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Or... I mean, that. sadly, the sadly, the 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 health industry pries on the insecurity of people who need to lose weight. Right. And it infuriates me. It infuriates me because it goes so much deeper than that. And and we're going to we're going to talk about the difference. Right. The difference Absolutely. of what has drastically changed inside of you from now to what was going on then. So now we get into the fact you've, you've gone up and down, you've then done this yo-yo, you still got all this stuff going on. The mental hasn't clicked with the physical. Um, you know, obviously it hasn't become life changing and, and lifestyle and long lasting. And then 
So you're at this point and how does the ER shred fall into your life? Where does, where does it come out from? So the shutdown happened and I binged out of boredom. I drank heavily and ballooned back up to 185 at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't proud of it, but I was like, I'm never leaving. The I'm not leaving the house. Who's going to see me? Who cares? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, I allowed I allowed myself to accept it because mm -hmm. of what was happening. And I know that's not healthy. I why do you think you did that? Why? Why do you, have you have you reflected on why you did that? Because there's a lot of people that are in that position right now, Heather. Um, a lot of people have gained. Um, you know, I I think they nicknamed it like the COVID nineteen or COVID you know, like fifteen yeah. or whatever the hell they right. they. Everything has to have a name, right? That's the only <laughs> thing that drives me crazy. Everything has to have a name, like. No, you just kind of made some bad choices, right? Like, but right. but why do you let that? Why why would you let that happen if you knew how crappy you felt? So I think for me, and I don't know who else can connect to this. I felt like so many things were out of my control. Why not let everything be out of my control? And I okay. allowed myself to be out of control. It was like a reasoning. It was just it was giving up. Mm. Like. The, the program that I was so passionate to go to teach kids every day, the or like the ensemble stuff that I do and that I live for, shut down, done. Mm. But that was everything that ignited me, gone. Yeah. Overnight. Do I have a teaching job next year? Do I not? I don't know. We don't know mm. what it's going to look like. Are we focusing on cores? Are we going to be in buildings? All of that unknown, I allowed to bury me instead of accepting I can only control so many things. Wow. Say that one more time. I did not accept the fact that there are only so many things that I can control. I let everything else control me. Yeah. I hope people receive that because it's, it's real. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's it's powerful. True. So, so you got to this point and then, so now so back, so, so where are you at? Where are you at with ER? Like, how do you, first of all, how did, how do you even find out about ER Shred? I've been in this group since 2015 when I first started using the products. Okay. So you've been in the group that we right. had and then we, yes. before we changed it yep. over. Yep. Hot I've damn. been around that long. That's so, right. You sent me, that's right. We have funny videos or something. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> we um. We won't have that much again tonight. That's so funny. Um, oh, God. So be before ER Shred, I'm like, it's August. I was like, okay, I need to go back to school eventually. <clears throat> I'm going to need to put real clothes on again. So mm. I joined another product user and I did carb cycling. Okay. And I did carb cycling in August, September, in the beginning of October. And I How was lost, that? I lost 17 pounds. I was having success. Okay. But, and I appreciate what I learned about it because that's where I learned about the, all the hormonal stuff that was going on with me, especially with all the ovary issues I've had in my history. So I gained a lot from that. But it was work to figure out, measure, package. And then I was thankfully remote teaching at the time. So I was home. So it was easy enough to make it work. But then I started thinking, eventually I have to go back in the building. Do you think you could have did that if you were working full time? No. Unless I didn't sleep. I mean, some people can. But I I was watching Sean and Crystal. And I'm watching and I'm like, I talked to the coach about it. I'm like, what do you think about this ER shred? And they're like, you do you. Yeah. It's not my style, but you do you. So do whatever you choose. And then one of my people. Wendy Coleman did the shred, posted her results, and I texted her. I'm like, all right, is this legit? She goes, Heather, just shut up and do it. Okay. And she Dude, put it much first... nicer than that, but in her way, she did that. I love Wendy. She yeah, she didn't she didn't put it so directly, but she's like, just do it. You don't know until you do it. And I yeah. love her and I trust her. And I act she came to this with me. But I wouldn't have known her if I didn't teach her daughter. Mm. That was her daughter was one of my students, and she's one of our rock stars in this 
group as well, and she's she's done some shreds herself. Her daughter is a badass. Uh, yeah, she is. Uh, what is it? Great East All Star Soccer. I can't yeah. remember the exact title, but Crystal Crystal has written programs for her, fitness programs for her. She has. She used to, I, I believe, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm like 99% sure that she had her as a client one time. My girl, Marley? Yeah, Marley. That, that's my student. Yeah, that's so funny. That's my girl, and she finished that's so her funny. contract for school. Okay, so we owe, we owe, we owe you to Wendy. That's, uh, that's, that's good to know. That's good for to know. my shift, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, so you jump into the ER shred. You do your first ER shred. And talk to me about, um, first of all, talk to me about the shred itself. What, what did you first think when you heard about the ER shred protocol? Like, what was the first thought that came to mind? I love steak, but I worry about <laughs> the, the cholesterol in my family history. That was okay. my initial thought. That's what yeah. held me back. Okay. So you were on, you were, you, you were under the mindset that, you know, dietary cholesterol was going to cause this thing because family history and, you know, just so I want to make, I want to give one little teaching point. Everybody that I, I, I hear so many people define themselves by their family history. And I'm like, mm, I can't get behind that. Like, I just can't get like, I'm overweight because my mom was overweight. No, you're overweight because the habits that your mom learned did, were not she successful. You, yeah. And she passed those on to you. And you now have crappy eating habits and exercise habits and everything else habits. And that's where it came from. Are there right. genetically things that that can, you know, that can yeah. change some? Of course there are, right? That, that'd be right. foolish for me to say they're not. But the majority of people that use that as an excuse, it's <laughs> just that, an excuse. And my girl, Susan Rothman, will testify to that. It's oh, a damn excuse, it. <laughs> right? It's a damn oh, excuse. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, you, you do that. But what then makes you say, yep, I'm going to do this? <clears throat> I needed to simplify. I didn't have the time to, I didn't have the time to meal prep and portion and, and calorie count and carb count and oh my goodness. Yeah. And I trust, I trust Wendy. So she goes, Heather, just do it. I was like, yeah. oh, all right. She goes, just one time. It's 11 days. All right. Yeah. I'm in. You're not going to lead me astray. I trust yeah. you. I love you. So I did it and I lost, was it? Eight and a half pounds and 13 and a half inches in my first shred. In 11 days. In 11 days. And besides that, what clicked inside? I came alive on, like, the come alive on day five happened for me. My what does that energy, mean? My energy was through the roof. My mental focus was going. I was, I was responding better to things. Like, things didn't tick me off as easily. And I'm an Italian with a temper. I get pretty, I can be a little short. I don't know where I got that from, <clears throat> but that is hereditary. I will say that. <laughs> um, but I didn't respond as quickly. I kept much more leveled about things. I was more productive. Mm. And people yeah. who have seen me. So I was home March to January for remote teaching. I didn't mm -hmm. have a reason to be in the building. So I taught from home. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. But when I got back in the building, January 20th, people saw me again for the first time. And they're like doing double takes. Cause number one, they didn't recognize me, but yeah. one of my close friends said, it's not just the weight. There's a different energy that is surrounding you right now. Mm. Mm. And this girl tells me like it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost, you know, we talk about the ER shred being so much deeper, so much more than just initial physical results. And I'm always talking about, like, we got to look past the inches. We got to look past the pounds. Like, you know, we, we shouldn't have the mindset that we need to lose weight to get healthy. We should get healthy and the byproduct is losing weight, right? And, and you have to have, number one, it works because you do get that physical aha, like so fast, right? And I talk about this and 
the ER chair, like I'm almost jealous of it, to be honest with you, because the amount of years and the amount of money that I spent trying to figure out that aha moment of how powerful food really is. Like you guys get this in like six to seven to eight days, depending upon the person. Right. And you get this boom. You're like, whoa. Right. Like, whoa. Like food had that much effect on me, like my hormones, my brain, my fog, my sleep, my digestion, my gas, all these things you just thought were normal. And I'll, because I keep it real. Yeah. Hormones. I got to tell you, my cramping and bloating has been better in the months that have happened since the shred. So ladies, yeah. I'm keeping it real for you. Yeah, yeah. That's important. I mean, listen, you know me, like I, I, you know, for me, like as a health coach, like nothing's off topic, right? Mm -hmm. You, we go, you want to talk about poop? We'll talk about poop. Like you want to talk about hormones? We'll talk about hormones. Like right. these are all health topics that absolutely need to be discussed because it drastically impacts quality daily of to quality daily life. You know what right. I mean? Like, you know, I know my poor sister suffered with massive cramps. I mean, to the point where she was like curled in a ball and it was just absolutely crazy. But, you know, Susan just said when nutrition is right, it's on all levels. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my God, like she, oh my God, like it's Bye, just nuts. Susan. So here's my question. What, what clicks inside that's different about the shred versus all the other challenges, all the other programs, all the other things. Why at the end of the shred is it, I, I'm, not, I'm not done. It's just the beginning versus before it was like, okay, this is the last day we're done. Like, where did, what is that? Where, what is so, that shift? For me, it's, even though we've eliminated, we're not restricting. We're restricting mm. what, but we're not restricting how much. And I think that mindset for me is what changed it because it wasn't <clears throat> about measuring. It was about, am I full or am I hungry? Oh, wait, mm. I'm a little tired. How much salt and sodium did I have today? Okay, well, let me fix that and balance myself out. Yeah. And so, you know, when I, um, when I think of this, Heather, I want to, I'll share with you something. Um, you know, that one of the schools that I, I went to was IIN, right? It's very different. Um, and I love it because there's so many crazy concepts and you're like, wow, how can I put this into play? One of the most beautiful things I learned was this thing called crowding out. And instead of getting somebody to say, okay, I'm, you know, you need to remove this and remove that. Like, are we doing an elimination diet? Yes, we are, but we're filling that void, right? We're, we're crowding out the bad and we're filling it in with the good. Right. Listen, it's so you're crowding out the bad because you're filling it in with the good. When you're fueling your body for performance with quality nutrition, food, and what, I, what do I mean by that? Food that provides you energy, clarity, focus. Like, you know what I mean, right? When you eat healthy food, you feel alive. When you don't eat healthy food, you, you feel like you want to die. Right. And what we're doing is by giving you guys all of that, we're almost taking the mind away from the fact that we're doing an elimination protocol and you don't even feel like it because as we say, you get to eat like a king or queen. I mean, you never felt deprivation, right? You never felt like you starved. Did I starve no. you on this program? Uh, and uh, so you can process. I'm on day four of shred number six. Mm -hmm. So day four means 48 hour fasting. I'm at mm -hmm. the end of my two day cleanse right now. And I'm not hungry. I'm drinking my yeah. cleanse as a warm tea and I'm fine. Yeah. So people yeah, are like, oh I'm, uh, there's a, there's something that I'm gonna that I'm gonna circle back with on that particular point. Yep. But so so you've gone through all of this, like you know, after after shred one, shred two, shred three, like you know, explain to people what does that mean to be on so many shreds? Like, is it that we're strict with the eleven days, or or what's the concept? What have you learned from being a part of this community for so long? What have you learned around food? How has your mindset shifted around that? How do you view food now versus how you view food then? Like, let's get it. Let's 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 quickly just touch on that real quick, if you if you don't mind. So I've so what I've learned is what food serves my body and what food doesn't. My body is going to tell me what it wants to eat, and it's going to tell me what's going to make it feel like crap. Um, I have done multiple shreds 
and I've added back maybe five different foods. Mm -hmm. And so I would always like to go for a glass of wine or a gin and tonic. Those were my mm -hmm. two go-tos. I have reintroduced both of them. Wine, white wine was okay. Um, gin, I felt like I spent the night at a frat house drinking Boone Farm. So I no longer even want it. Yeah. I thought I wanted that all the time. I was like, oh yeah, I've got my purple gin. I'm going to make a pretty purple cocktail. I no longer want it. Yeah. So it's not, I don't feel deprived of it. Yeah. It's that I've broken my relationship with it. Mm. That is like, it's like you're, you're, you, you music educator are playing music for Jesse's heart right now because this is what I've struggled for so many years to get people to understand. You're not, you're not losing out because you don't get to go and get wasted. You're not losing out on life. In fact, I would argue that you are gaining so much more of life because I think of the epic adventures that your body can now handle. Think of where the places you can go. Um, Heather, I have been fortunate to experience some of those beautiful places in all the world from the top of the world. I'm talking 14,000 feet high, right? Um, you know, for, I mean, you can't do that if your body can't function. And you have not experienced this world if you have not looked down upon it from 14,000 feet. I can promise you that because it is just a, it is another level. But that's part of what we're talking about. What else can you do? It doesn't have to be that, but, but where else can you go? Does that make sense? Right. Like, right. And my shred number three, I think, was one of my bigger shreds, too, because I was pretty close to where I wanted to be for weight. Mm -hmm. So... I shredded my relationship with a scale. I was in such a mindset that every pound defined me and, oh crap, I gained one here. Oh, oh yay, I lost three. Oh wait, I'm back up. That yo-yo on the scale was defining me and it was controlling me and it was letting me value myself based on that damn number. Mm. So I put it away. And mm. I went January, I think I've stepped on the scale twice in January. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I, I was like, I woke up one morning, I'm like, something's different. I'm going to step on the scale. So I, but it was a control of me. I felt something shift and I had broken through my plateau and I was under 150. And mm. I was like, holy, this is possible? I love this. And then, but I was in my cycle at that point. So it was ending. The next day I wake up. I'm like, something, I got to check something out. I was down another four and a half pounds. Mm. Why? My cycle ended. So I put that information out there for you ladies to stop with the scale. Yeah. Because your damn hormones are going to screw with you. And they are going to mess you up. Yeah. It messes with you enough. Don't let it mess with your head because of a number. Yeah. That I'm so funny. glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. And I, I can't, we don't have the time to dive down that rabbit hole right now, but it is such a powerful, it is such a powerful thing to not be defined by that because you can, you can try to tell me that you're not, but I know there's millions of people that are defined by that scale. And, you know, when you're ready I want you to take a video. The best exercise that I could ever give you from a fitness standpoint is I want you I want you to buy a sledgehammer and go take your scale in the driveway and beat the living shit out of it on video. And then you finally have broken free from the scale. You know I don't need to buy a sledgehammer right this one in my basement. I'm good. Well, whatever you want to do. That's how I roll. <laughs> smash it. Smash it, right? Okay, so now we're six shreds in and I mean, you're a firecracker. Like you show up every day in the group. You're helping other people. Like this whole shift has come back where it's not even you. It's not even that. Like, do you find that now that you've done it for so long, has it just become second nature? Because I know a lot of people struggle in the beginning and they're asking all these crazy questions. And and I get it because our mindset's so trained to diet, 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 diet. Oh my God, I can't make a mistake. Oh my God, I can't make a mistake. Like, is like where are you at now? Like what is like 
describe where you're at with food and, and life and and talk about our community. How has the community helped you and how like what 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 I don't think people realize the value they get in this community that we offer for free. So yeah. share with them a little bit about what it's done for you and we'll we'll end we'll close out with that. Okay. I'll try and be short, I promise. Okay. Um food has never been easier. I think the biggest struggle that people have is this is not the norm. This mm. is not the nutrition curriculum. Let me be my little shred <laughs> shred educator. Here. This is not the nutrition curriculum that we learn and we teach in schools. And it's not what matches those pictures that the government pays for. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint, hint. So people come into this with that mindset and they question it. Mm. Whereas when I came into this, thanks to Wendy, she said, don't wrap your brain around it. Just do it. Yeah. Best and advice ever. Did. And that's what I encourage anyone to do. Give yourself mm -hmm. 11 days. But this community, holy cow, the power of this community, because when your community is small, the fires dim and a good wind can blow it out. Mm -hmm. But as Sean has put, with everybody that has brought their logs to the fire, and we're 20,000 strong, even if a handful are struggling. We don't burn out. There mm. is someone there to pick you up. Mm -hmm. And I like to teach by example. And I like to show my students that I'm a learner. So I'm constantly showing up to learn. I My background is music. How do I know how to help people through the shred? Because I show up and I listen to you. And I yeah. listen to Susan. And I am open for that. Mm. And I'm open to trusting that. Because there's enough people in here who can tell everybody else, yes, listen to these people. They mm. do know what the hell they are talking about. And trust in the process. For sure. I love it. I love it. I love it, friends. Well, listen, we're at the top of the hour. Um, I... I I can't tell you any more than I've already told you. You know how valuable you are to our community. Um, Sean, Crystal, Bob, myself. I mean, the the energy you bring, the way you show up for other people. Um, I'm proud of you for showing up for you. Um, you've drastically changed a lot in your life. And, you know, I'm grateful for how streamlined and how easy you're making my life. Um, you know, because I could, I, I, I don't even know where to begin to do the organization that you've, be, you know, that you've added to our group. Um, I, I honestly, you send me links and I'm just like, I don't understand what she's sending me. Like, I gotta like, I need like a private lesson or something like that because oh, it's yeah. so we'll, crazy, we'll but that link I, sent you I can't, um, I just, I, I can't express to you, you know, how grateful I am for you. I'm, I'm really, really happy that this has been the answer for you. Um, it, it was our mission from the beginning. We knew we had to get it out there as crazy as it sounded, as crazy as we sounded. We were just like, you know what? Screw it. Like we're going to, we're just going to throw it out there and we're going to go with it. And man, oh man, am I sure glad that we did. So the quality of people that we have, the, the people that we continue, I mean, that group grows by sometimes hundreds every day. It's crazy. And it's still just the beginning. This is just the beginning of what the ER Shred is going to do to impact world health. Like I believe it in my soul, in my heart. I feel it. I live it. I, I, it, it's just, it's changed my life, which is, this isn't about me right now, but drastically changed my athletic performance. And I mean, that's a huge deal, um, you know, in my world too. So thank and you. And it's genuine and it's gratitude. It's non-judgmental. It is the community that accepts you for who you are and wants everybody to be healthy. Everybody. All we want to do. Yeah. And let's go against the grain and fit out, right, Jesse? For sure. For sure. Fitting out is definitely the cool thing to do. That's for sure. So, Heather, thank you so much, friend. Um, you know, guys, thank you for those of you that have, that have stayed on. You know, we went a little bit over, but it's just too good of information. I mean, I could keep talking to Heather for hours and hours and hours. I hope you found value in this. Um, for those of you that <clears throat> maybe are just starting, 
those of you that have been through a while, you know, the, the best gift that you could ever give to somebody is to step into your power and share this amazingness with everybody. Look what it did for Heather because somebody was strong enough to share with her and say, hey, cut the crap and let's just get this done. And that's the beautiful thing. And come and put your log on the fire. Come as you are. We don't care. We don't judge. Like all are welcome. All are welcome to our free community, which is www.ershredders.com. Um, if you want to find out more information about the ER Shred protocol, you want to see testimonials, you want to hear medical professionals and what they have to say, because trust me, we got them all, www.ershred.com. Every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, we do another Shred Your Body call on Mondays. Our brand new ambassador, who I just saw a comment from, Mr. Bob Seabright, um, you know, he does our Shred your business call and on wednesdays tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern we do a shred your testimonial call where for the first 30 minutes we have brand new shredders come on who have just finished and share how the er shred has drastically impacted their life and, and i don't know about you heather but i find myself tearing up a lot on those calls because they are pulling at the heartstrings in the stuff that has that has been able to happen with this. And we do that every single Wednesday night. And if you guys want to find that, you go to our free Facebook community up at the top or go to erstread.com. And on the second page is a big banner. And you just click on that thing and we will welcome you in. We'll be there with open arms. I got big arms and I can get big, big bear hugs. So we welcome everybody. So thank you again, Heather. Um, I hope you guys all have an amazing night and we will see you right back here next Tuesday for episode number 16. It's gonna be a good one. If you got some athletes, I would highly recommend you start chatting with them because I got some big plans. We will see you here next week, same time, same place. Hope you all have an amazing night.